Get ready. It's a well-deserved break, Pittsburgh, with Heather Abraham and David Highfield from the KDKA TV studios. It's Pittsburgh Today Live. Yeah, get rid of that tie. Who needs the tie? I know, look at you, just ripping it <laughs> right off like a Band-Aid. Exactly. Room! Let's do this. All right, it's Thursday. It's August already. How did this happen? I don't know. It's a time. It's how time. It's how time, time generally Every day moves forward, yes, but somehow works. it has happened. It's August 1st. I know. And wow. wait, can I tell you, I, I said just a few minutes ago as we were getting ready to start the show, uh, we have August 10th circled on our calendar. Yeah because it is a big day here in the city. Uh, the woman who is called the Queen of Broadway, obviously in Wicked, but in our house, we know her as Elsa. Elsa from Frozen. Adina Menzel. Uh -huh. She's coming here to Pittsburgh. And so a couple weeks ago, I got to interview her. And we're so excited because today is the day that we're finally sharing that with you. Yeah, and it turns out she's a real person like everybody else. She is. And you know how like um, is you meet some people and they have a, they have like a special voice. Yeah. You know, for their characters or whatever. She sounds exactly like if you close your eyes, you're like, oh my gosh, it's Elsa. That's, like, I'm it's, talking to Elsa. There's no so, change in her voice at all. This interview is coming up late. Your yes. interview is coming up later in the show. Yeah. But we want to show you a little clip of something that happened beforehand. So everybody is human. Everyone is. And I, I told them, I'm like, I'm already recording. I know your time is valuable. So I wanted to let you know, I'm already recording this interview. And she pops on and I wanted to share this. So take a look. Hi, how are you? Can I um take one more bite of my? Do whatever you need to. You are a legend, uh, a queen, and oh my god, thank you. <laughs> you do whatever you need to do. <laughs> so there, she, she, because she was doing so, like when when celebrities are doing a round of interviews, right? They're scheduled back to back to back to back. They like block there's off no a break. Certain, there's no break no. at all. So I just happened to catch her during probably like what she thought was a five minute window where she could have a little snack and she was just like, I need to eat this bagel right now. It was an everything bagel with cream cheese, by the way. Oh, see that we do wonder. Well, that's what we want to know. Yeah. We want to know what the celebrities do. Yeah. So now we have a little glimpse of that. And it was really cool. You'll see this too. The, in behind her, she has this wall of like some of her her, you know, like big Tony stuff. Awards and things. And there's just Elsa <laughs> behind her, you know, like you just see this big thing. Anyways, it's really cool. Can't wait to share that. Yeah, with you. we're looking forward to that. Uh, so the other day I shared my interview with Christian yeah, Burrell, yeah. and one thing I mentioned was because he's a Broadway star as well. Uh -huh. and, and so he's working on this collaboration with Elton John, this new musical that Elton John is writing the music. I mentioned a picture. We have the picture to share with Yay! you now. So there is Christian Borrell with Elton John and Elton's husband. And Elton John is writing the music for Tammy Faye, the musical. Uh, Christian grew up in Fox Chapel. He's playing Jim Baker, the televangelist Jim Baker, uh -huh. in this. And I think it, it's actually, I think it's going to be a really good show. It's going to be very interesting. I, I bet it's going to be yeah. interesting. So. We don't get it as much anymore, but at some point in Pittsburgh Today Live's history, we started going by PTL, and then people started, like, well, like the, right. the old... Right, the, like the PTL club, like Jim and Tammy Faye, no. you know? And so, uh, you know what, I ran into that? I had the PTL microphone on the, oh. the, the red carpet oh, at the no. Tonys, and people were coming up to me and saying, PTL, and I say... Pittsburgh Today Live because they're outside of our viewing area. They're in New York City. They don't know. They didn't know. So anyway, that came up there. Oh my gosh. Right, big moment for some local high school students last really night. Something. And I love this. They yeah. got to sing backup for Foreigner. Which is huge. You're on a, I mean, even though it's in your backyard, you're still with this yes. huge group. Uh -huh. um, so we, we have a little clip of it to share with you. Take a listen. I wanna know what love is. really good so that was them practicing this is so the choir cool. from thomas jefferson high school they sang back up at star lake last night and they did this because they they won a songwriting contest foreigner absolutely loved them and now oh. we have a picture we don't actually have any video from last night well, we're waiting okay. for that yeah but we want to show you a picture of the choir behind them 
Hopefully we have it. None of those. Yeah, oh, here they are. How I neat. recognize them. That's them. Wow. So they, the district had this posted on their Facebook page. Said sang their hearts out last night. That's so, really, really cool. That's really awesome. I could you imagine? I what a fun experience. Yeah. Like, you know, although I, I, although I wonder, I mean, being on stage is one thing, but I wonder if it resonates with them that, who they're singing with. Because, like, for those of us who grew up in a certain era, that's, like, a huge deal. Yeah. It's probably a huge deal for them, too. I'm sure. This was a huge deal for one 14-year-old girl named Erica. And just so crazy. Because, as you know, if you follow Taylor Swift, if you've been to her concerts, if you've even watched any of the clips, you know that she always, at one moment in her show, takes off her hat, her signature hat, mm -hmm. and gives it to somebody in the front row of the concert. Just so happened, in Germany, there happened Munich. to be a... Pittsburgh gal right there and got the hat. Yeah. So anyway, 14-year-old, uh, we hear that she's absolutely thrilled. She of says course. this is the first time seeing the show. She says she will never, ever, ever forget this. It's amazing. <laughs> I, yeah. I, Look at that. She just high five Taylor Swift. I know. Did you see that? That is so cool. How do you get that close? Though? I like, don't how know. How do you get her? Do you attention? have a really, really good seat, or do you like? I, I don't know. Or do they select you out of the crowd? Like, do, do you remember like a... the Bruce Springsteen video where that Courtney Cox comes up on stage? And I used to think that was like, she, like Courtney Cox was not an actress, and it was like just a random person out yeah. of it, you know. And then later on, I found out, no, no, it's Courtney. Cox. So it was all put together ahead of time. But this, yeah. like, how did this work? I don't know how it works. Oh. oh, we're getting info, intel right here. Taylor's mom picks the person in the audience. That's really cool. So could it, can it be from anywhere in the stadium, or is it someone up? From anywhere in the stadium. Wow. Oh, so my you, gosh. So I like love all this information coming in. Potentially, you get, like, an upgrade. Obviously, like, you might get an upgraded seat. This might not be just necessarily someone who is right. in the front. It could be somebody who's, like, up in the nosebleeds, and all of a sudden, they're well, getting this front row that is, seat. And that makes it even more amazing. Can we have her on oh. the show? I want to have Let's her on the show. Let's work on it. Let's talk when to we, Erica and back. see whether... Yeah, exactly. She has to be coming back soon for school, so let's get her on the show, I think. Let's do it. Uh, celebrity sighting a little bit closer to home. We've all been on Sierra Watch, you know, because she's here with, with this football player. Um, Sierra... <laughs> with this football player. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe you heard of him, Russell Wilson. <laughs> uh, she shows up at Steelers training camp, though, and this is awesome. Yeah, so, I mean, we've shown pictures of her before. We got yeah. those pictures of her, like, on the streets of Oakland. She was on the sidewalk meeting with people. She's also, she was at Kennywood, uh, a Penguins game at one point. She was spotted there. Yeah. But you know, there's something about, like, some people just have an air about them, like, uh -huh. yeah, I'm a celebrity. She has she that has air. That air. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. You see her and you think, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. Oh, this yeah. This is automatic, supersonic, hypnotic, funky, fresh. Do you remember? No. That was actually pretty good. You don't no, that's why I'm marveling at you because I was like, I think that was good. You're well, looking thanks. for any backup singers. <laughs> They're not. Heather Abraham not. is available. I don't know. I, yeah. But it's so much fun. I don't know why it is so cool that, like, we have somebody well, I super think, internationally but, famous right here in our backyard. Well, but it's it like if Joe Manganiello comes back to town. We still like, you know, Joe Manganiello's at the Steelers game. Joe Manganiello popped up here. You know, it's kind of the same. It's kind thing. of that same thing. Yeah. yeah. All right. We have some adorable animal moments of the day that we want to share with you. And this is actually a triple header because we have three of them in a row. Okay. So we're going to get to our first one. And, you know, there's a, sometimes dogs get a bad rap for not liking the mailman. Right. But not, not this in this one. case. Oh my gosh. He must yeah. have treats. So this is Franny Joy, a uh, little chihuahua, runs out to greet postman Dan Aww. every day in Illinois. Oh, look at this. This is so cute. Just waiting. <laughs> Just <laughs> look at them. They waiting. love each other. Aww. Oh, this is a love story. I, th so this started three years ago. The owners have been posting videos every day of this greeting. This past weekend marked the 500th. Run at the Look mailman, at as they oh call it. Oh, my gosh. They have a little <laughs> truck. Oh, wow. My friend, no wonder she's so excited. My <laughs> friend had a chihuahua, and this thing, actually, two of my friends, two different friends, and these dogs were so super protective of their owners that if yeah. you tried to even get close to them, they were like the yappy, like, growl. like they, oh, they oh, wanted oh, to oh, snip oh, at oh, you. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. 
it's super protective. So it's so, but this is so cute. We love it. The duo has become so popular. The mayor there named a day in their honor. Oh my Melts gosh. Melts your heart, doesn't it? So cute. All right, next up, a woman in Wisconsin who rescued a raccoon. It was almost hit by a car. A woman found it. It huddled in the road and figured out that it had been abandoned by its mom. Aww. Little thing. Oh, so cute. Um, so obviously, like, you know, maybe some experts don't recommend you take in wildlife. No, um, they don't. They don't. We're just going to say that up front. Yeah, like maybe. <laughs> Patty's laughing. Talk Not to a good idea. Talk somebody ahead of time. Um, but they decided to help this little guy out. And yeah. You know, it's she, just super So cute. she gave it kitten formula and electrolyte water. She hopes when it gets a little bit bigger, she's going to be able to figure out how to ease it back into the wild. But normally it would be with its mom now, and yeah. it's abandoned from its mom. You know, I think the video is a little bit older, although I'm not really sure I haven't looked into it, but Frankie actually just shared a video, another raccoon that was like, stuck in a lake or something and they, yeah. they pulled it onto the boat as a baby raccoon yeah. and they nursed it back to help and it just like lives with them now. Oh, <laughs> uh, well maybe that's how it's going to turn out in the woman in Wisconsin. It's Who just knows? part of their family now. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, we have one final one. We promised you three. We have one and it's another rescue. We want to give shout out to some firefighters in Southern California. So a kitty cat, a little kitten, managed to wedge itself into a spare tire and got stuck. I can't even... So then a man oh. takes the tire and, with the kitten in it, and the, just the kitten's head is sticking out, and so oh. takes it to the fire station. And the first thing, look at Oh, poor yeah. little guy. So they use Dawn dishwashing detergent to yeah. try to lather it up and slide it out. That didn't work, so they got out the Sawzall. And they use like a spoon to protect the cat's head. And they, try and get around look at it. it. They Aww. got the cat out. Um, and so Krista, our executive producer, is watching this and watching the video and looking at that cat, like with its little head sticking out and saying, oh, kind of rough looking cat. And I was like, Krista, this is the worst day the cat's ever had. Yeah, like give it oh a break. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. But the cat afterwards, I could be in the running for a makeover, uh, like in a Zazu Salon day or something. Which I said to you, I'm pretty sure that would not fly with the cat. <laughs> they wouldn't but, like, but I don't know. It does say the firefighters gently washed and fluffed the kitten after they rescued it. This reminds me so much of Full House when was it was it Stephanie or Michelle who got okay. their head stuck in the railing on the on the stairs going down oh earth. wow do you remember this episode no i do all? not see every episode and they, had to, they put like all this butter on her head trying to lather yeah, her out butter is often a way people try to get out of something like that that episode <laughs> i think scarred me and stayed with me for so long because i was like okay note to self don't stick, stick your, your head, head <laughs> in between the spindles don't do that well, how did they get would. her out I don't remember. They may have had to cut out the, the spindles. The spindle, yeah. I don't yeah. remember how the episode, I just remember that was, like, was really traumatizing. She I mean. needed the firefighters <laughs> yeah, from Southern right. California, and then they would have like given her a shampoo afterwards, right. too, apparently.